This is Scott Becker with the Becker's Healthcare Podcast. I'm thrilled today to be joined by a brilliant guy, Ragdev Govind Rajan. Ragdev, can you take a moment to introduce yourself? Then we'll ask you a bunch of questions about what you see, your priorities, and, and, and some of your perspectives. Sure, yes. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for the invite. Um, so I'm a neurologist and a neuromuscular physician at University of Missouri in Columbia. I specialize in uh, taking care of patients with ALS, muscular dystrophies, uh, neuropathies, and, uh, and you know, conditions like that. Uh, besides my, my role as a clinician, I, I'm also a, a researcher, and I'm involved in ALS research. And I also wear the administrative hat, um, and I'm the uh, associate medical director of my clinic. Um, and I, I play an important role in the administrative and, uh, and you know, decision-making part of my clinic as well. Uh, so you can call me. I, I am a jack of many things. So you know, I do I do clinic care, I do research, and of course, I'm also a part administrator as well. Um, and you know, I, I enjoy I enjoy all aspects of it. Each one is very unique. I enjoy each one uh, as they are. That's fantastic, and it's fabulous in terms of avoiding burnout. They have this multitude of roles that excite you and give you gratification and challenge you. So congratulations. I'll ask you a side question because it's on everybody's mind right now. And, and, and of course, like most people, we expect you to opine on it whether you have a real answer or not. So are we going to get through this coronavirus thing? And are we generally going to be all okay as a country? You know, your question is very valid and on time. Um, you know, in the past, we have faced similar threats or, you know, similar outbreaks. And we have always uh, you know, done well and gotten through it. And I know there is a lot of anxiety um, and there is definitely, you know, a risk of the virus spreading. But I am pretty confident that the healthcare system we have to place in this country will be able to deal with this. And, and you know, we will, we will come through this pretty successfully. Um, you know, we all have to play our part, doctors, other healthcare providers, and of course, all the people. We all have to play our part, but I'm, I'm fairly confident about the healthcare system that we have, and I, I, I think we will be able to get through this. Well, well, thank you very much, and we think you're right, and we hope you're right, and just it's a fascinating situation. Let me talk differently about, you know, what do you do today that it, it is most interesting to you? What's most exciting to you today that you work on, that you work with, that you see? So there are a couple of things that I, I'm really excited about. Um, the, the first thing, you know, I, I'm wearing my my uh, researcher hat. Uh, the first thing I'm really excited about is the way the research into ALS or Lou Gehrig disease is progressing. Uh, it is, you know, as you know, Lou Gehrig disease is a, is a progressive condition, and you know, it's uh, it's a fatal condition. Um, many of our patients pass away within a couple of years after diagnosis, and you know, treatment and our cure is 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 really on top of everyone's mind. And the way ALS research is progressing, uh, especially with the new uh, gene therapies that are coming out, uh, as well as the introduction of what's called a platform trial, where we can test multiple medications. Uh, it's in a clinical trial protocol. I think these are really exciting times for us in the field. Uh, in terms of uh, of wearing my um, clinician hat, um, I, I think the the thing that I'm really excited about is that you know there is a greater awareness about physician well-being. We all like to use the word burnout. You know, we we you know that's been discussed for a while, but but the question is how do we manage it? I think there is a greater awareness everywhere, and you 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 just alluded to that in the first part. There is a greater awareness of physician well-being, and I think that's really great for for all of us and 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 our patients, because we want healthy and happy physicians to take care of our patients. So I think the greater awareness of well-being is 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 something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, and on the administrative side. Um, there is also a greater awareness about you know physicians being in leadership role um, and also grooming them early on. Uh, I think one of the things we have realized as physicians or any other healthcare providers is that you know we we don't get taught 
about this in our med schools or residencies or fellowship. I mean, you you are taught how to take care of patients, which is of primary importance. But once you come out, you you are faced with all these things which you have never thought how to dealt with. And I think a greater focus on physicians being leaders will really help. And I'm I'm, I'm really happy to say that I have seen an uptick on that. Uh, so I think I think these are all all good good things for medicine. And, and talk for a moment about leadership and how important that is to our community, that we have the best and brightest, whether it's physician, nurses, other providers involved in leadership. Talk a little bit about how that's so important to our healthcare system. Yes, I, I, that's something that's really close to my heart. You need physicians in leadership role. And I, I say physicians, but I also mean other healthcare providers, including nurses and and, uh, and everyone else. Because, you know, we see what is going on on the ground uh, and we know how to manage that. But if we are not in a position to make decisions and and we see someone else who has never taken care of a patient making decisions on our behalf and most importantly on our patient's behalf, you know, you, you lose you lose the trust. And, you know, you, you want to empower your healthcare providers, you want to help empower your, your physicians so they can make the right call to take care of their patients and, and at the same time make sure that, you know, we, we are able to provide the best care. So I think I think having that, that physician being on the leadership role, being able to make decisions which will have direct impact on patient care and which we know, you know, how it is going to impact, I think is very useful. And and I can I can share a personal example here. Before I I stepped into the role of administration and leadership, we had ongoing issues in our clinic. And one of the issues we had was you know, access to care. And that's that's a you know coming you know being in a in a rural area that I am, access to care is is a big thing for us. And there were a lot of plans put out to try to address this access of care issue. And, and you know, but, you know, it, it, it just, it was a top-down approach where, you know, no, where physicians felt that they were being asked to do more and more uh, to try to reduce the wait times for patient and improve access to care. And it never worked out. And after I took over this position, I set an example. I, I realized what the problem was. I set an example of how you can you know, innovatively have a clinic schedule where we can really get in more patients seen. And I, I showed that to my colleagues on how it can be done. And once I did that, I have seen, we have seen an uptick in, in more patients being seen and we have seen an uptick in our colleagues stepping up uh, and doing them. So setting an example as a physician leader and, and being on the table to make these decisions on their behalf, I think, uh, puts the trust back into the system. So I think I think that's that's where I, I see that we need to get more physician leaders involved. Thank you, thank you. And, and when you look at your practice and what you do, if there's one thing that you're particularly proud of, that you're thrilled about what you guys do, what is it that you're remarkable at that you take great pride in? So I, I personally think the the, the pride I really take in is of course taking care of all of our patients. But I think for us the biggest thing is to provide them with with, with the best care possible uh, right here in our in our area. You know, we are for the lack of better word, we are called a flyover country or flyover zone or whatever you want to call that. And that's also true in healthcare. It's hard to find physicians here, it's hard to find good care for our patients. And some of our patients drive four to eight hours to go to a big city uh, to get the care that's needed. And um, for me, the pride has been to set up the centers of excellence that I have done in providing care for ALS patients, for muscular dystrophy patients, and also being able to provide them with, with cutting-edge clinical trials and research that they can be a part of. A patient of mine, when I first joined here, had muscular dystrophy and he had to drive five hours to go to a clinical trial. The van that he was driving had a sliding door which was not closing. So here he was driving five hours in the, in, in the in the winter of Missouri trying to go for a clinical trial. And when I heard this story, I said that we need to change that 
I, I'm lucky that I have an excellent team with me here, and we were able to build all these centers of excellence for ALS, for muscular dystrophy, bring in a lot of clinical trials uh, and research for our patients, and you know we we have been able to change that. Uh, and again, that's you know I, I partly um, give credit to the leadership position I was in, where I had interaction with all the hospital management and and you know the relevant people who who gave me the resources who also point me to the right people to get this done so i think you know they're all interconnected the way i see i don't see them as separate islands i see them as all interconnected cities so well, that's that's fantastic and 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 tell us a little bit more about the the development of your career how did you get to missouri how did you start practicing there and what was it like when you got there when you started practicing there so I, I did my uh, training at Washington University in St. Louis. And after I finished my training, I, I was looking for a job. And uh, I, you know, I met my chair, uh, who is my current chair, and I really liked him. Um, and you know, he, he seemed like a person who would back you up, who would fight for you and who would advocate for you. And you know, I, I was looking for a chair who could do that. And he was he was very honest, he was very um uh genuine and humble and you know he was ready to fight for us and that's how I joined the place here. I, I really enjoyed that part. Um and when I joined we you know we, we had a few things going but there were a lot more things we needed to uh, build and create. And you know, I, I've been able to like I give example in the previous discussion. I want to provide the best care possible for my patients right here in mid Missouri without having to go to a bigger city. And we started doing that. It took me it took me a while. So it took me almost five to six years to build all these. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to build them. Uh, and it's been a work in progress. And it's been a learning curve for me as a as a physician, as a leader. Um, and as a researcher, but I'm glad that I really have the support. One thing I really found was if you set a vision and you get the right people in who believe in that vision, they will be able to execute this. I, I, I don't like to micromanage, um, but I do like to set the vision of what I want to do. And when I set that vision and I really, you know, it's not just a vision in your mind, you want to you want to vocalize it so people know what your vision is. And I've done that multiple times. And when you do that and you get the right people, they they will execute the vision for you. Um, and that's what I've been able to do. And uh, like I said, sometimes you get lucky and you get the right people as well. So uh, things just fall into place sometimes. Well, that's fantastic. And you spoke about the department chair that recruited you and the support that he gave and the strength, and we're able to sort of recognize that. And also talk about something so important for everybody, and it's so hard to do, which is the setting this vision of what I want my practice and career and profession to look like, and constantly setting that, and then setting sort of group or team goals for what the practice and clinic and research should look like. That work of sort of clarifying the vision it, it is so important for so many people, uh, you know, and, and then even if it's somebody else who doesn't need to set that vision, doesn't look at the world that way, they at least have something to plug into that's meaningful and do their day-to-day -day work. So just, I think, a really remarkable thought pattern that you bring to the table uh, and, and a great appreciation for those that help to recruit you and so forth. So, Ragdev, it's just a magnificent pleasure visiting with you, and, and we hope you'll we'll be able to get you on again. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, and thank you for the invite. And, and let me just ask you one more question. If people want to learn more about your practice, is there a way that people could learn more about you? Yes. Um, you know, we have our university website where we have listed our practice and all the specialty care we provide. Um, and if you just type in M as in Mary, U as in Umbrella, MU Healthcare Neurology on Google, you can easily find us. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Um, we appreciate your time so much, Doctor, and just a pleasure visiting with you, just fantastic. Thank you for what you do and for joining us today. Thank you, Scott, thank you, I appreciate that, thank you.